intense storm has prompted hurricane West warnings. West Virginia to the East Coast. You could just raise the Florida. We are running out of time. Please, for everybody's sake, keep the warning. Get out. Chapter 9. Calamity and Disaster Preparedness. Disasters can happen at any time. Whether natural or man-made disasters, these traumatic events brought different impacts to communities with severities such as serious harm and widespread damage to human materials, financial, environmental landscape, and human death. The exposures to such have to respond by taking exceptional measures. As researched, the Philippines is located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Because it is surrounded by water, the archipelago which consists of over 7,000 islands is frequently afflicted by various disasters and calamities. Nonetheless, the Philippines is a beautiful island where people have come to appreciate these bodies of water as blessings, as sources of marine wealth. As I've mentioned, the country is one of the most vulnerable nations when it comes to disasters and calamities. In fact, we are currently experiencing most of this, such as earthquake, volcanic eruption, tsunami, tropical cyclones, flood, landslide, bushfire, drought, epidemic, major accident, and armed conflict and civil unrest. But what if some of these will happen at your community right now? Will you be able to survive? Are you prepared? In the next chapters, along with my team, we will further explain the procedures, strategies, or methods for staying safe and prepared before, during, and after these catastrophes and tragedies strike. Terrorism. What can you do to prepare? Finding out what can happen is the first step. Once you have determined the events possible and their potential in your community, it is important that you discuss them with your family or household. Develop a disaster plan together. Step 1. Create an emergency communications plan. Choose an out-of-town contact. can be your family or household. Selected contact should live far enough. should be unlikely to be directly affected by the event. You should know that they are the chosen contact. Every household member has to have each other's contacts. For example, email address, telephone numbers, home, work, and page yourself. Step 2. Establish a meeting place. Predetermined meeting place far away from home. Arrangements to stay with a family member or with a friend in case of emergency. Be sure to include debts. Step 3. Assemble a disaster supplies kit in an easy-to-carry container, for example, the full bag or small plastic, include special need items, change of clothing, sleeping bag or bedroll, battery-powered radio or television, extra batteries, food, bottled water, and tools. Good idea to include cash, copies of important documents such as birth certificates, passports, and licenses. If disaster strikes, remain calm down and be patient. Follow the advice of local emergency officials. Listen to your radio or television for news and instructions. If the disaster occurs near you, check for injuries. Give the first aid and get help for seriously injured people. If the disaster occurs near your home while you are there, check for damage using a flashlight. Do not light matches and candles or turn off electrical switches. Check for fires, fire hazards, and other household hazards. Sniff for gas leaks, starting at the water heater. If you smell gas or suspect a leak, turn off the main gas valve, open windows, and get everyone outside quickly. Shut off any other damaged utilities. Confine or secure your pets. Call your family contact. Do not use the telephone again unless it is a life-threatening emergency. Check on your neighbors, 
especially those who are elderly or disabled. A word on what could happen. As we learn from the events of September 11, 2001, the following things can happen after a terrorist attack. First, there can be significant numbers of casualties or damage to buildings and other infrastructure. So employers need up-to-date information about any medical needs you may have and on how to contact your designated beneficiaries. Second is heavy law enforcement involved at local, state, and federal levels follows terrorist attack due to the event's criminal nature. Preventing future acts of terrorism and preparing for massive re response preparation become a national priority overnight for law enforcement at all levels. Third one is health and mental health resources in the communities can be strained to their limits, maybe even overwhelmed. Their health might be also affected because of the attack. Fourth one is extensive media coverage, strong public fear and international implications and consequences can continue for a long period. Fifth is work workplace and other schools might might be closed and there might be restrictions on how domestic and international travel they might be a lot of changes closed schools and other establishment other flights might be cancelled you and your family or household may have to evacuate an area avoiding roads blocked for your safety you can move to somewhere from from the place where the terrorist might attack. The last one is clean up may take months. After the attack, it will took a while for a state to clean up the mess and it will take a lot of time moving on on what happened in the attack. Evacuation. If local authorities ask you to leave your home, they have good reason to make this request and you should head the advice immediately. Listen to your radio or television and follow the instructions of local emergency officials. And keep these simple tips in mind. Wear a long sleeve shirt, long pants, and sturdy shoes so you can be protected as much as possible. Take a disaster supplies kit. Take your pets with you. Do not leave them behind because pets are not permitted in public shelters. Follow your plan to go to a relative's or friend's home or find a pet friend duto. Lock your home. Use travel routes specified by local authorities. Stay away from dawn power lines. Listen to local authorities. Local authorities will provide you accurate and updated information prior to the situation within your area. Stay tuned on different media and news platforms such as television and radio. And of course, we should follow their instructions. If you're sure you have time, first, Call your family contact to tell them where you are going and when you expect to arrive. Second, shut off electricity and water before leaving if instructed to do so. Leave natural gas service on unless local officials advise you otherwise. You may need gas for heating and cooking and one thing, only a professional can restore gas service in your homes once it's been turned off. In a disaster situation, it could take weeks for a professional to respond. Additional positive steps you can take. You may want to make some arrangements to take turns listening to the news with other adult members of your household. Another useful preparation includes learning some basic first aid. To enroll in a first aid course, contact your local Red Cross chapter. In emergency situation, you need to tend to your own well-being first and then consider first aid to others immediately around you, including possibly assisting injured people to evacuate a building if necessary. People who may have into contact with a biological or chemical agent may need to go through a decontamination procedure and receive medical attention. Listen to the advice of local officials on the radio or television to determine what steps you will need to take to protect yourself and your family. First aid primer. If you encounter someone who is injured, apply the emergency action steps. Check the scene to make sure if it's safe for you to approach. 
then check the victim for unconsciousness and life-threatening conditions. Someone who has a life-threatening conditions, such as not breathing or severe bleeding, requires immediate care by trained responders and may require treatment by medical professionals. Call out for help. There are some steps that you can take. However, to take care for someone who is hurt but whose injuries are not life-threatening. Control bleeding. Cover the wound with a dressing and press firmly the wound. Elevate the injured area above the level of the heart if you do not suspect that the victim has a broken bone. Cover the dressing with a roller bandage. If the bleeding do not stop, apply additional dressing and bandages. Use a pressure point to squeeze the artery against the bone. Provide care for shock or for shock. Keep the victim from getting chilled and overheated. Elevate the legs about 12 inches if broken bones are not suspected. Do not give food or drink to the victim. Stop the burning by putting the affected area under the running water. Cover the burn with dry, clean dressings or clothes. Care for injuries to muscles, bones, and joints. Apply ice or a cold pack to control swelling and reduce pain. Avoid any movement or activity that causes pain. If you must move the victim because the scene is becoming unsafe, try to immobilize the injured part to keep it from moving. Be aware of biological and radiological exposure. Listen to local radio and television reports for the most accurate information from our responsible governmental and medical authorities on what's happening and what actions you will need to take. In order for us to have an accurate information, listen to the radios and television so that you will know what's happening at the moment. And talk to the authorities and listen to their instructions and follow their advice. Reduce any care risk. The risk of getting a disease while giving first aid is extremely rare. However, to reduce the risk even further, the first thing to do is avoid direct contact with blood and any body fluids. Second, use protective equipment such as disposable gloves and breathing barriers. Use surgical gloves and wear a mask and wear your PPE. Lastly, thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water immediately after giving care. And also change your clothes and other medical equipment and throw it away. These are what to do if this will strike us. Here are the things that we need to do in case of typhoons. Stay indoors and keep calm. Monitor TV and read your reports. Secure your home. Trim trees near dwellings. Keep roads clear for emergency vehicles. If your house is in a flood-prone area, go to the nearest designated evacuation center. Have flashlight and radio handy with fresh batteries. Stock up on food, portable water, kerosene, batteries, and first aid supplies. In case of flooding, turn off the main sources of electricity, gas, and water in your home. Stack furniture above the expected flood level. Avoid low-lying areas, river banks, creeks and coastal areas, sloops, cliffs, and foothills. Rain can trigger landslides, rock slides, or mudslides. Avoid wading through flooded areas. Do not attempt to cross flowing streams. Streams. Do not operate in electrical equipment during a flood. Do not use gas or electrical appliances that have been flooded. A strong earthquake is a natural tsunami warning. Do not stay in low-lying and seashore areas after an earthquake. A tsunami might occur within minutes. Other natural signs include sudden lowering of the sea level or an unusual rise and fall of the sea level. Fish and other marine life may be exposed when they see retreats. Never go down to the beach to collect this. Tsunami waves might rush back anytime and carry you to sea with great force. Tsunamis are also preceded and or accompanied by unusual sounds. Be alert for these signs too. Immediately vacate and seek higher ground. 
stay here until all signs of danger have passed. In case of earthquakes, if you are in a structurally sound building, protect yourself by getting under a sturdy table or desk and holding onto it while shaking occurs. If you are inside a moving vehicle, do not attempt to cross bridges, overpasses, or flyovers which may have been damaged. If you are near the shore and feel an earthquake, it is safest to assume that a tsunami might occur, move to higher ground. If you are outside, move to an open area, stay away from power lines, posts, and concrete structures that may fall or collapse. Move away from mountainous areas or near a steep hill slope where landslides might occur. Stay calm and don't panic. Once the shaking stops, take the fastest and safest way out of a building in an orderly and calm manner. Do not use elevators, use the stairs, check yourself and others for injuries. Administer first aid if trained to do so. Otherwise, seek immediate assistance from nearby authorities if necessary. Do not enter partially damaged buildings after an earthquake. Strong aftershocks may cause the structures to collapse. Check for spills of chemicals, toxic, and flammable materials to avoid potentially disastrous situation. Check for fires and if there are any, have them extinguished. Check water and electrical lines for damage. Should you decide to evacuate, leave a note stating where you will go. Bring along items essential for your survival. Follow official advisories and warnings. Avoid needless telephone and road. Use to allow authorities unhampered. Use this for relief and rescue operations.